so, so we have something that uh, we need to tell everyone. Uh, this entire time we were pretending that this is an international podcast. Uh, some people mm-hmm. on Twitter have found <laughs> us out. Uh, both uh, me and Hakim live in the United States. We are currently talking out of uh, JT's basement where he has us <laughs> imprisoned as content mules <laughs> for his uh, large uh, multiple podcast slash channel uh, uh, spreading operation. Conglomerate, his empire. Exactly. <laughs> My actual real name is Billy. Uh, and Hakim's real name is Bob, or was it the other way around? Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I only do what JT tells me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes he calls me Billy, sometimes he calls him Billy. It's it's very confusing. But uh, if you're confused on why, why we st- I'm starting off with this uh, little uh, very weird uh, <laughs> thing, uh, is because th- th- like this happens all the fucking time. It's usually Western, but not only Western uh, leftists, and not just leftists, but uh, people who are politically charged, let's call it uh, that, yeah. uh, tend to try and ostracize uh, fellow uh, communists from uh, other parts of the world by telling them that they're not from that part of the world enough. They're not, you know, a, a proper representative of that part of the world. Not only that, no, no, no. They, they tell you you're outright, you're white. You're a white guy. God, you, you might, your, your English is not accented. You must be white. Absolutely. There is, I have never heard of an ethnic person who didn't speak with, with a, without an accent. That's an, a physical impossibility. I don't think even quantum physics can, can, can theoretically. <laughs> oh my God. He yeah, it- makes internet and modern cultural references all the time that is literally impossible for for somebody in the mm. who lives in the desert like the, those things do not reach them there the fact he knows what these nuts are and repeats it yeah. every single episode <laughs> yeah, exactly, must yeah. mean that he is from wisconsin or whatever it is this is quite literally how these people uh, talk like and it sometimes comes from people on our side of the aisle quote unquote who end up showing just how much yeah. internalized <laughs> orientalism they fucking have but uh no. No, 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 please, okay? Uh, you you happen to consume um, solely, solely Balkan media, uh, you know, with me only, only Arab media. No, not, not ever have I heard an American song or been force-fed American garbage on, <laughs> through the YouTube recommendations. Never, never, absolutely not. Also, by the way, uh, maybe you can comment on this, you got me, because I also feel, feel this sometimes. Um, language, because uh, I'm sure a lot of people who listen to us are actually pro- probably monolingual. Um, language is like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and after a couple of, after a little while of not using English, right, you end up like stumbling over words. You forget, you you forget simple shit. And this doesn't only go for English. This goes for all languages, basically. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I think, I, I won't speak for you, but I'm sure he does the same. I, on the uh, on, one, on, on, on one hand, on the other hand, oh, yeah, you know what the fuck I'm trying to say. When I try to like keep up with my English, I try to consume a lot of English language media, uh, and I'm not gonna go and start fucking watching I don't know Monty Python or some garbage. Uh, I, I will... <laughs> Monty Python's okay, um, but no. What, what I try to do is I try to organically uh, absorb uh, English language bullshit. So usually it's through watching random YouTube videos. Most YouTube content produced in English is American. Therefore, most of the shit I end up absorbing is American cultural perspectives, American cultural, you know, including also memes, by the way. Um, so that's why, for example, I can, I don't know, say, what the fuck, pee-pee-poo-poo, and people know what that is, <laughs> right? At, at one point, because we are consuming so much uh, media, some of it very good, some of it very much so can be defined as uh, garbage, uh, coming through one language prism, usually coming from English, at one point, at least it's, uh, in my case, I can't talk for you, but I have quite literally started thinking in English. English has kind of become my primary language from which I am translating to the other languages uh, Mm. that I speak. My brain, when it sees an apple, it thinks apple. It doesn't (laughs) think uh, yabuka, you know? Uh, so uh, that that kind of could be pro- a problem, et cetera, et cetera, but it just shows uh, that you will adapt to the uh, culture you interact with the most and the language that you use uh, the most. That then should not be used as a tool against you to call you a lesser uh 
person from this place or another place and someone who is, you know, not really from there. But that same category of people that are giving these sorts of comments were very well known for also telling people that, oh, they're not really Mm -hmm. uh, from this or that part of the world because they marry or date a person from the Western Hemisphere. So, you know, their vagina or dick (laughs) must have uh, have whitened them up or some shit. It's it's, it's the the classic, classic reactionary mentality Mm -hmm. which... uh, even when you have some sort of uh, class consciousness can still uh, pop up in your head. Uh, and it usually, in my opinion, grows out of, as a tumor, out of people that are just contrarian for the sake of fucking being contrarian yeah. and that want to be right for the sake of being right and aren't really a part of an ideological current that actually wants to uh, do anything more than prove themselves right to their own little clique. Uh, to get, you know, the, the, the internal waves of approval. At the, at the end of the day, um, the, the important point is that I am actually originally from Chattanooga. Uh, I am born and bred in Chattanooga. Really? <laughs> right? Exactly, yes. Uh, as Billy or Bar or whichever. And uh, Yugopnik is from Wisconsin, and that's why, that's why we reference those two places most. Because we miss our home, and JT won't let us out of the basement. <laughs> Please, send help. <laughs> that's why he's not here. Like That's the only reason why we can talk about this, because... Uh, uh, JT uh, has COVID. No, no jokes, jokes aside, and he, our boy is gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, he does have but, COVID. Yeah. Uh, but he's upstairs being sick, so uh, he let us record the episode on our own. Uh, we're probably gonna get the shit beat out of us. <laughs> he later. gave us some more scraps today. But, but, but JT wants <laughs> to do this. content, so even if it potentially a cop car is gonna arrive at his door, uh, this is content. Us talking shit about him, so he will yeah. have to have to exactly, include it. Yeah. Content brain is. Uh, maximum tier for uh, for our overlord and great commander in chief uh, JT Chattanooga pimp <laughs> the, the, the commissar commissariat of of a uh, podcast uh, a podcasting has requested us to be here. Uh, I was gonna say moving swiftly from that topic uh, into something that's even st- stupider somehow. Uh, something that's uh, maybe I'm the only person who slept on this. Uh, oh, he used an American idiom. Oh, oh, <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, frozen fruit, particularly frozen berries. This is something I didn't fucking go because before I was like, why would you ever go for frozen berries? You want the fresh shit. I didn't realize that they get the fresh shit and then freeze it immediately, so then it stays fresh, and then you just take it out and have it whenever you want. Strawberries get fucky when they're frozen, but raspberries and blackberries and blueberries and shit, they're elite. They, they're really, really good. Yeah, um. <laughs> apparently it makes them... I love the topic switch. It's fucking impressive, uh, as always in every one of our episodes. Uh, but apparently some of it, when it's frozen, it actually uh, keeps more nutritional value uh, for a longer yeah. period of time. Mm-hmm. Like broccoli, I think, and shit like that. I just really don't buy any frozen things because it's, to me, a logistical nightmare to unfreeze. Uh, I am a very spontaneous, dumbass motherfucker, so I will literally sit in my dirt until it pisses me off and then (laughs) the whole apartment is clean. I'm not like, oh, I clean every Sunday or some shit like that. Uh, And same with food. I will sit, like, super not having thought of going to the supermarket, buying the proper things. I will like, ah, I need to make something right now, and then it will take me 30 to 40 minutes to actually make it, which would um, take one hour and 20 minutes most likely if I had to defreeze everything before I could uh, put it in the in the oven because no, I still do not own an air fryer. I know. <laughs> Donate on Patreon. Help me buy an air fryer, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but not. Nah, it's still the good old oven for me. And if I have to de- defreeze something, it takes too long. And then I get very anxious and then I throw it in while it's still iced up a bit and then I wonder why the chicken uh, literally has has like goo coming out of it when I when the knife goes in, uh, and why is it cold How in the you, middle? Please. But yeah, you you need to come to Iraq, all right? You can you can simultaneously thaw something as well as fry something in the summer in the in the sun in the summer sun heat. Uh, I was gonna say by the way, just as uh, you were talking, I noticed um I looked at the back of my phone case, and normally in the back of my phone case I have my like ID card for work, and it's not there. And I just realized I left my ID card for work, which allows people to like prescribe opioids and shit. <laughs> Whoa, shit! <laughs> I left that. I left that on my fucking desk. <laughs> This is not good. <laughs> okay, I'll look into this later. <laughs> Somebody will hopefully get oh, a nice high yeah, tonight. Yeah. Uh, ho- uh, I mean, hopefully nobody takes it. Jesus Christ, this is going to be a pain in the ass to replace. Okay, Knowing you, you fine, probably shoved it up the wrong place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the sun doesn't I did, shine actually, I did, and nobody's going to see you there. I did palpate a, 
I, I did palpate a prostate today. Um, uh, Speaking, <laughs> if that's of any interest to yes, anybody, yes, yes, yes. like always it is. <laughs> Speaking of work, I had to go through four days of uh, constant corporate meetings with these corporate oh, robots, which uh, uh, came from mostly Western countries, but some of them uh, also from the East. Uh, and uh, but some of them were fine. Some of them were annoying. The worst ones, uh, Jesus, forgive me for uttering this. Uh, Germans uh, <laughs> were a fucking nightmare to deal with uh, because uh, they, some of them drank, and they're not Muslim, and they're not. They, it's obvious that they drink, but because it's a corporate dinner, they drank non-alcoholic gin, non-alcoholic martinis what as the well. Fuck? I just, There's I such just, a thing. Yeah, yeah, you can dry it out of the. It's a. It, there's a whole process. Dude, I'm happy. I'm. I don't drink, and even to me, that sounds like a crime against it humanity. Is, it is insane, <laughs> and like they, they are not capable of talking about absolutely anything except work. But the pinnacle of my oh experience God. was uh, when uh, a few, like less of us that were in the, the specific team in which I work at, uh, we went on a dinner on our own. It wasn't these uh, bigger corporate events, which two out of the four dinners were. Uh, and we ate, and uh, it was very kind of uh, my boss to be like, okay, the company's paying for this, paid with a company card, that was cool or whatever, but she pulls out the, the card and pays for it and closes the note, you know, where the receipt comes, and she's not leaving a tip. And I'm like, what the fuck is going mm. on? And it's a rather <laughs> large bill, and the girl that worked our table fucking worked her ass off. So yeah. as oh they were exiting, God. all of a sudden I pretended I needed to take a shit or take a piss. And I just told them, oh, wait for me outside. I'll go to the toilet. Mm. And then I went around and I found the girl who already had the picked up the receipt with no tip and I pulled out some cash and I was like here you go and she was like oh thank you so much and I'm like no really sorry and she just looks at me and she's like I'm used to it Germans oh my god oh my god <laughs> I fucking died laughing oh, at them like everything oh like, my god she's like, like she didn't say it but most likely you, already by nationality you can kind of guess she's gonna yeah. tip you or not god forbid it is the god corporate forbid. card oh tip god. with the tip yeah. with the corporate it's it's like it's what, like an extra ten euros would it fucking kill? Ooh, the the ballot, the but the budget's gonna get all fucking wacky. <laughs> After this long rant, welcome to yet another episode, episode 31, I believe, of uh, the D program. Hey. Today, it's going to be me and Hakim. We already said what our overlord is up to. We dearly miss him, <laughs> as I was hopefully missed in the previous episode. Obviously not. It's probably <laughs> going to turn out to be the best episode of all time. But today, we are That's talking right. about what Hakim actually, I'm looking over our notes. Yes, we actually have notes. We are a professional podcast titled <laughs> yes, Centrism, yes. the political equivalent of a limp dick, fence sitting <laughs> the ideology. <laughs> to me, exactly right. <laughs> to me, the animal, which is the self presuming centrist, has always been a fascinating one because everyone, and I do mean everyone, was what we can define as a centrist at one point in their life. At least they thought they were because no one ever is, but later on that. In the same way, a child is, uh, according to some schools of thoughts, born pure, you know, a tabula rasa of sorts. Most people's political journeys begin with, I don't know, milk toast at best analyses of the world, which present, quote unquote, balance as the true solution to the world's problems. <laughs> Something r respectability, respectability. Sorry. and this respectability, <laughs> which is attacked by radicals on both sides who keep ruining it for everyone. Like it's the most basic, rudimentary, unsophisticated, anti-intellectual garbage take, in my opinion, one can have. It's, I don't know, the unseasoned chicken of political thought. <laughs> it's either yeah. the refusal to look reality in the eye, you know, the flat earthers of politics, or the refusal to accept one's own political leaning, which arguably is the biggest chunk, or what has been the case in most of my personal interactions with so-called centrists, it's 
privilege of such proportions that even the slightest change of the status quo would spell nightmare for them. That the centrist is, is devoid of reality, living in sort of a self-imposed prison of ideological insanity. That the centrist, in a way, is the most ideologically charged animal in the world. Yeah, no, very, very, completely agree. Uh, what something I find interesting as well is um like just a preamble I guess we can say um as a question like oh where do these ideologies come from where does ideology in general come from um <laughs> and as always we live in a society um uh, Joker the, the the Joker face um and uh, when you live in a society you can't say that fucking line seriously you end up absorbing absorbing the ideas and and points and perspectives of the society that you live in when you live in a post enlightenment liberal uh, like Western society, like for example, the United States, you end up basically absorbing those perspectives first. Oh, we are pretending, we are protecting freedom. Oh, we're the best country on earth. We're this, we're that, we're that, we're that. Uh, and this becomes your default perspective, right? This is the default skin you get in Fortnite. That, that, <laughs> that's what centrism is. It's the default <laughs> skin. <laughs> that's so stupid. I'm sorry. But yeah. Um, and my, my point being is that these people, they have these absolutely, well, like I said, default NPC fucking perspectives. And that they absorb from society, but they somehow seem to think that they've reached these opinions through, ooh, in introspective, uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, yeah, like uh, through extensive thinking and uh, elaborating and discussion. Oh, they've reached these enlightened, literally enlightened centrism, uh, points of enlightened centrism, uh, in which basically they think all these other people are idiots. Uh, everybody else doesn't know what they're talking about. Oh, but I, I'm the reasonable one. I'm the one who knows. Oh, you know, too much. <laughs> I'm the one who <laughs> too doesn't much cap knock. <laughs> I'm kidding because they don't. Yeah, do yeah exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's like oh, but oh, you know the the uh, I know that without workers it's not good, but without capitalists it's not good either. Poo poo pee pee. I'm so smart. Um, and th th that's just kind of the, the point. It, it really is. TLDR. It, we live in brilliantly society. put, mm -hmm. and like. I, I guess there's no better uh, way to kind of continue the conversation about uh, quote unquote not having an ideology or your ideology <laughs> being not having an ideology than uh, by just touching quickly on uh, what uh, one of my favorites, uh, even though lately he's been saying some weird things, but okay, uh, the sniff king of uh, modern philosophy <laughs> and what he has to say about it. We never really touched on him or on, on his analysis of ideology, so if you'll let me, I'll just like to very briefly touch on on it for our audience because uh, more, uh, the stage more, is yours, I more the programming, the better. Thank you, my love. So I'm simplifying greatly, but just from the top of my head. So Zizek ponders that what drives us, bonded together, obviously, by material reality because he's a Marxist, is desire. Desire to become something we currently are not and something that seemingly all around us have uh, objectively reached. But these desires, which direct our actions, beliefs, and purpose, don't exist as floating concepts in our mind. They're not just given to us by, quote-unquote, human nature. They're structured by our understanding of what reality, society, and our place in it are. So this structured understanding which informs our desires, which literally translates them in a way, is ideology. To simplify even great more, to greater, to simplify even more, <laughs> uh, the collection of how you see every single thing in your surrounding, how you interact with it, how you look at yourself, and more importantly, your place in said society is ideological. Therefore, and this is the brilliant thing that kind of Zizek introduces, therefore, quite ironically, the more aware and to an extent honest you are with your ideological beliefs, the more of them you can identify and categorize, the less, if you want to, you can be impacted by them. And therefore, quite literally, the most ideological groups are those who claim to be without ideology. 
they're the ones that eat out of the trash can of ideology, <laughs> uh, which quite literally is defined as uh, one of the program's like main goals as something that uh, needs total <laughs> annihilation. But yeah, I, in the in the text, if you check it out in almost all of our descriptions, but so I, ideology <laughs> seeps into every crack of society, and we need to forget like the ide idiotic political science 101 uh, i read 1984 once uh, conceptions <laughs> of it not having an ideology my dear friends is and say it with me ideology and there's a special place in hell reserved for neutrality but um something also to add is that these people who um think like oh yeah i don't have an ideology you know that is the most exactly so it's the most ideological perspective there is um it is even more deep it's even deeper in this trash can basically because you are so deluded by the, by the, this this misconception that you have that you don't realize that your very position is entirely ideological but it's one that you know is is uh, like a foggy mist around you you think it it doesn't actually exist you think that this is just how things are i i don't i'm not right or left you know but the fact of the matter is that you are encultured into a particular society mm -hmm. you are encultured into a certain family you are encultured to into the political perspectives uh, of the people around Which you and your desires your own yeah Exactly right. And all this results in a particular uh, political perspective that the first step to, you know, actually developing a, a proper political understanding is at least recognizing that you have a political perspective and it is rooted in some sort of uh, primordial, you know, ideological roots. But uh, Hakeem, I'm not political. Way. I hate hmm. politics. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, please. Yeah. You hate politics. So you hide behind the, the, the nuance. Oh, I'm so reasonable and respectable. I, 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 <laughs> MSNBC told me to do it. I hate gravity. Uh, I don't like, yeah. say, oh, it doesn't exist. Like, it, it, I yeah, would like exactly. to fly, but everything is ideologically informed. Everything is political. Therefore, you can dislike it as much as you want, my dear child. It is still there. And also another thing is that saying you don't like politics or saying that, oh, you're not a political person is an inherently privileged position. Um, this is not an, a, a liberal argument, right, of saying like, oh, you check your privilege. That's not what we're saying. But what we mean by privilege arguments is because people around the world and minorities, for example, in the first world, as well as um, even like the poor uh, people of the imperial periphery that might be of the dominant ethnic and religious group and whatnot, all of us have uh, to to grapple with the politics of our reality on a daily basis. Our entire existence is politicized. You can't forget, uh, to use an American example, oh, he's oh, he's pandering to the Western audience, oh! <laughs> no. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, so ideological uh, example <laughs> that can help. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, and a way to help Americans understand is, for example, just look at the reporting around anything African-American. Anytime a black person does anything, it is inherently politicized. Compare that to when a white person does something. If a black guy was to walk into a school and shoot a bunch of people, you would not hear the end of it. And the, oh, the, you know, the, what's it called? The, the, um, uh, analysis of gang, it, it, inner city gang violence or whatever the fuck. It's the music. You know, all this bullshit. There's so many guns in yeah, the music. <laughs> Yeah, it's N-word, N-word, pop, pop. I don't understand it. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but when it comes to uh, like a white kid, all of a sudden they, they depoliticize. That, that's also an inherently political thing that they're doing, uh, kind of relevant to what Very has happened example. recently. By the way, by the time this episode comes out, <laughs> there's going to be like four other school shootings, so it's going to be out of date, but whatever. Um, but that's the uh, also an equally important point, that these people who have the inherent privilege of being able to say, I don't like politics and I don't want to engage with politics, um, at the same time, if they were to do something that is inherently a political action, uh, it would be completely depoliticized, they would be... Um, there would be like this clinical dissection of what they did to try to make it seem as almost innocent as possible. It even comes down to the images that they use. Uh, I'm sure everybody has seen this, but whenever a black person commits a crime of any kind, especially when they're incredibly innocent crimes, relatively, uh, relatively they're going to use uh, a mugshot of the person. Meanwhile, you can have a uh, like mass rapist and murderer that happens to be white, and they're going to have a nice picture of him with a Thanksgiving dinner and a fucking sweater next to his family. Right? They won't use the mugshot of him. Right? Um, again, inherent ideology. And this ideology permeates every f single facet of existence, from media to education to politics itself, our own perspectives of ourselves, how we in uh, relate with each other, as well as, of course, this supposed centrism, which uh, somehow is depoliticized. Um, and I just want to, uh, if you just allow me, I, 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 there's one little thing that I want to add as well, which is this perspective of... Um, the idea that in the center is where nuance and respectability and being reasonable uh, is it lays only in the center when you're you can be too far left and too far right. Um, this is fundamentally um, 
problematic because first of all, most centrists, in fact, the vast majority of centrists, I would argue, um, are right-wing people, right? Their perspectives are inherently pro-capitalist, usually in certain ways, uh, socially conservative, in certain ways also uh, a slightly liberal, but in the, you know, uh, in, uh, impotent ways, like, oh, I'm pro-weed, and, you know, I wouldn't mind if my girlfriend had an abortion, like that type, but also they're like, mm, you know, these Guatemalan immigrants, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we're going to get into this discussion a bit later about why we think uh, they have these kind of perspectives. But my point being is that they kind of try to monopolize the perspective of being reasonable and keeping it in the center. Meanwhile, saying that, hey, you know, the workers should have uh, access and, and the control over the means of production, that's on an extreme point. But they're like, oh, no, you, you shouldn't be no power, worker's power at all, but it shouldn't be all worker power. It should be kind of in the middle, which basically means pizza parties. That's, exactly. that's what that trans translates to. Exactly. Beautifully put. And what I always kind of wondered about is where, like, it originates from. And if you look at it from a relatively Marxist perspective uh, and look at it, you know, what material conditions inform the reason why centrism is considered intellectual while radicalism is considered wacky and stupid and uh, antisocial, uh, we can kind of go back to uh, looking at like, why does the ideology of not having an ideology hold such power over, I don't know, institutions and unironically politics? And as usual with, with almost all pro status quo, schools of thought it's built upon the back of capitalist self-preservation i know i sound like a clock that's repeating itself in every fucking episode <laughs> but systems influence our way of thought so as long as this is my opinion on why centrism is kind of this main thing and it mostly funny enough and now i'm gonna sound like uh, tucker carlson but it comes from the universities uh, uh like as, <laughs> as long as no times of except it's not a time of exceptional crisis and it's not erupting the intelligentsia of uh, any village city or state gravitates away from what quote-unquote radical thought because their middle class usually and not always sometimes literally bourgeois sensibilities have no use for said radical ideologies so even if they read hear, or partially agree with what they themselves would uh, call uh an ideology which they do not have of someone let's say on the left their material circumstances children which at the moment are satisfactory tell them not to fuck with how things are right now because you never know it might get worse with the commies or even the fascists so while we know that when the liberal is cut uh, fascist bleeds it's in his kind of absolute best uh, lazy interest at times of relative stability to cloak himself as being non-ideological. So basically, in, in a, what I'm saying is the status quo will obviously push forward ideological leaders which don't fuck with it. And that's how you end up with the majority thinking that they're being the minority and not ideological while at the same time being the dumbest sh sheeple which they are. The, 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 the more somebody says the word sheeple, the bigger a chance he's a sheeple. Like, it is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's such a... Stu yeah. But I was going to say, TLDR, um, uh, fish hook theory. That's basically what we're saying, right? The, s the interests of the center are inherently linked to the uh, to the right. Exactly. Right? They never, ever, ever, historically, as, as well as in the monarchy, they've never, in their entire existence, looked to the left and tried to ally, ally with the left. Whenever anything happens, they always ally themselves with the right because they have the same ideological and economic foundations, right? Um, so yeah, it's not a <laughs> it's, it's not a horseshoe. It's a fish hook. All right, the further right you go, the more you get to the center, and the more center you go, the more right you go as well. Um, 
<laughs> the quantum fish well, book. <laughs> which, <laughs> Sorry, I don't on. know if you've seen the Elon Musk tweet. Like, this is the richest man on oh planet my Earth. God. And he, he thinks that uh, the left has gone more left, but he stayed where he is now. So that's uh, pushed him more towards the right by him not moving. That kind of pushes you more to the right because right wingers become more and more normal while the leftists go more and more insane. But in a way, the meme, the specific thing he posted uh, is beautiful because it's kind of true. The centrist <laughs> is moving further, and further right. Yeah. The more the left is getting radicalized and wants to actually do something. So he kind of admits it to what uh, modern like political analysis of, of a centrist do tell us is true. It's basically like this, you know, in the 40s, right, a ooh, enlightened centrist probably, probably would have been like, you know what, I don't agree with the lynching of blacks, but I wouldn't want them eating with me, right? And then 40 years later, uh, when it's considered, like, kind of weird to, to have, and not weird, it's very racist to have that perspective, it's like, oh, what, these lefties, they've gone so far. <laughs> they now expect me to dine with a colored... <laughs> <laughs> right it's so fucking oh geez my my shit and then the same yeah, and the on. same one who uh was pissed off uh about uh dining with the colored in in uh, 10 years uh, his kid becomes a bit more liberal but then uh, the kid uh also says oh my god they're going too too far now some of my neighbors are in interracial relationships this is fucking disgusting and then that's accepted and then you always but that's that's that's, that's reactionaries being reactionaries and the centrist is always uh Together with the reactionary, because the reactionary indirectly not only wants to protect the status quo, but sometimes even take it back to a better time of what? A status quo back in, for example, the 50s or the 60s or the 70s, depending on who you ask. So, so the, 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 they always are like a magnet to shit, where, no, like, a, they're always like a, a flies to shit, as we say in my part of the world, where the shit is the right wing and the, the, the flies being uh, self-defining centrist. See, the, the, the centrism, the, the <clears throat> kernel of, of centrism is feigning good optics. So you will, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, have some very performative um, condemnation of something that the right will do, but not actually doing anything concrete to, to, to uh, combat it. Right. It's a very, you know, like Democrat versus Republican perspective. Right. The ooh, the Republicans are the evil ones. Meanwhile, the Democrats are the reasonable ones. The reason the Democrats will yeah, give some fucking limp um, uh, dismissal or, or condemnation of something the Repo Republicans do, but they won't actually do anything concrete to change things. In fact, behind the scenes, they probably will do more to worsen whatever the Republicans are doing. And inherently, both of them end up being uh, right wing ideologies serving the different sectors of the of the um, ruling class. Couldn't agree more. I, I should stop saying constantly. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. But like here, we, we mostly talk about like centrists, which think, as we've said five hundred times, they don't have an ideology. They're wiser. They're uh, superior to all of these peasants uh, who uh, actually have passion in life and want to do something about the status quo, which is <laughs> fucking anal fucking them in a bad no. way every single day of their life. Nothing's wrong with my life. Uh, if, if you work, if you, why should we change? If you, if you own a company and you have employees, that is insanely ideological because you're exploiting them. If you are an employee and work for them, the ideology of the labor relations between you and your boss are insanely fucking ideological. So even some of our listeners that might lean more towards a quote-unquote center, even though we just debunked that even existing in the first place, uh, understand that uh, even if you're a very wealthy uh, labor aristocracy or whatever, uh, you know, third world is like to call it, uh, you uh, do have a lot to gain by being more ideological and by pushing the world more towards the interests which support uh, your specific class interests than, uh, than the other one. Because remember, no matter how much you talk about not being ideological, the ultra wealthy, the ones that do actually own capital and the ones that actually employ uh, are extremely ideological and they know exactly how it works. I don't know who said it, but... Uh, he said that every like um, if you want to be a really good capitalist, you can you can read Marx and become uh, uh, class conscious, 
but you can become a class conscious proletariat or you can also become a class conscious capitalist if you, if you read das kapital and have no soul you can very much so use <laughs> the information gained there to exploit people even more because you actually uh, agree and acknowledge yourself that the more you fuck your employees the better off you're going to be uh, this is not to encourage people to uh, kind of uh, say, oh, uh, class relations are liberal moralism, then I should become a boss. That is the true revolution. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but that aside, so, so we touched on these sorts of like basic centrists, but there's this even more, that they're, they're a smaller group, but in my opinion, they're even more annoying because they think that not having an ideology as a concept implies that there is an in inherent natural way of being you know a state which is non-ideological and what do you think uh, Hakim about uh, the natural state of the world and how we tend to because we grew up in capitalism we only lived in capitalism and we only know capitalism uh, sadly <laughs> what is this uh, where does this disease of thinking that uh, an alternative is impossible uh, comes from uh, that's a complicated question, but I think mostly it, it's, it depends on who's saying it, right? It would be if a white upper middle class guy uh, in New York is saying this, right, with a daddy that has a boat and a business, um, that's like limp dick um, pseudo-moralism and a, a attempt at shutting down conversation, right? Uh, if a um, Bangladeshi um, uh, cloth worker is saying this, um, then that's more out of defeatism because of the situation of helplessness that they find themselves in, right? Um, so again, it depends on what audience you're talking to. Uh, if we're talking about centrists, because you don't find centrists outside of the the um, the, the imperial uh, core, in the imperial periphery, you find people who have to actually engage with politics because it's thrust onto them. They can't help but, the, uh, but not, um, you know, unless in the very smallest circles, usually connected to the government and whatnot, or those uh, of, of um, the, the ruling class. Otherwise, the vast majority of the populations are inherently political. But in the West, when you come across somebody, it's like, oh, but there's no, like, you know, the change can't come to, so why even bother? Um, this is a, 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 uh, a lack of imagination, I would say. Um, it's like, how many times do I need to repeat it? Uh, Luxembourg has said, uh, she has amazing quotes. And the, one of my favorite quotes of hers is, um, uh, before the revolution seen as impossible after the revolution seen as inevitable, right? Um, that, that the revolution happened. Um, likewise, um, with Lenin's, you know, oh, there's some, uh, uh, weeks where years happen where you, and there's some years where weeks happen. Um, uh, and, and so on. Basically, the idea being is that, number one, things can happen way quicker than you than you uh, realize. Um, number two, uh, the inherent uh, political, social, and economic forces uh, are outside of our control for the most part, all right? We can direct them if there is a, like an actual uh, educated po political vanguard, for example, in some cases. But for the, most, uh, for the vast majority of people uh, of this mindset of, oh, nothing can change, you are not contributing directly to the political processes that are taking place. Um, so to you, it may seem like, oh, nothing can change, but nations have fallen and risen, uh, like, you know, on the drop of, the ha drop of a hat. Um, likewise, with changes of, of political systems, um, and so on. So my central point being is that if you're the type to be like, oh, but, the, you know, this thing can never happen, you need to really analyze why you think that. And if you actually, like, you know, were to look into yourself and, 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 and investigate this, you'd realize either you have some sort of defeatism about you, which makes you, you know, doubt that any positive change can occur, or you haven't actually thought about it, or more even more sinister, it's a uh, kind of tell on yourself that you secretly don't want change to happen because you're very comfortable in the position that you're in and that's where vast majority of these upper middle class usually white men um in in, in these uh, you know again with a aforementioned uh, dad with a boat and the business um that the uh, have these perspectives it's because hey i'm very comfortable and i don't have it i'm not seeing any oppression so i don't know why the, what these black women are talking about that's the, the perspective again not to say that there's anything wrong with fucking white men but but, but you know what i mean all right <laughs> fuck it shut up liberal <laughs> get, so my head. get out of my head <laughs> get, get out of my I, head I, I, <laughs> perfectly said i think there's a big issue that we live such short lives which people tend to say we're long that's fucking insane to me but okay we live such short lives so in in, in a small spectrum you cannot really uh, understand just how many massive systematic changes have, have happened throughout the eons and how a modern human interacting with one from feudalism would be like uh, i don't know somebody come down <coughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. Would be like somebody okay. coming down from a fucking Star Trek teleporter down to us to explain to us why we should uh, all unify as one planet and uh, even unify the stars, etc., etc. Uh, I... I, I ideologically inspired civilizational projects have managed to totally and utterly uproot what is defined as the natural state of being time and time and time again. We come from a species that had a similar subspecies, if you can call it that, of Neanderthals that we either ate to death or fucked to death. And from that, <laughs> we have come to a point in which we uh, are thinking of potential commercial space flights. So if you think that this is it. This is our peak. Just building really big malls and to repeat myself, having commercial space flights is everything <laughs> that we can yeah. do. Uh, you are either, as Hakim perfectly said, defeatist or again, to quote Hakim, you uh, the current status quo is very much in support uh, of uh, of uh, your standards. Or I would add a third one, which applies to at least 50%. You're a fucking idiot that doesn't know anything, okay? If you think this is peak civilization that we can achieve, then you literally are a part of the NPCs of the simulation that we're living in. You are not going to do anything impactful, and your grave will rot away next to the tens of millions of other NPCs that thought this was the only way we can exist, and somebody will uncover that grave in I don't know, 700 years because he's an interested in story and he wanted to see how people in that village or, or city over there used to live like. And he's going to find your browser history and he's going to say, oh my <laughs> fucking God, those people in those barbaric times lived like this and thought that this is the only way you can live. We burned people on the fucking stake for fuck's sakes because we thought it's natural for somebody to be a fucking witch. And we went from that to this and you're telling me I that mean, we can't go from this to have something you seen better? You're sorry. a fucking monkey, man. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you're right. He's like, oh, we thought people could be witches. And I was like, have you seen Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 real. End of history. Png hours. By the way, like what is like? Yeah, I need the stupidity of that fucking take. My God, I, that, if there's ever been a hot take, Jesus Christ. Uh, first of all, reality has ratioed. Uh, Fukuyama. Fukuyama. I was gonna say Fukushima. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Fukuyama. <laughs> <laughs> that was not good um but yeah <laughs> oh, hey i'm sorry like i i rarely i so rarely refer to his name but yeah um so reality has ratio with fukuyama but um th th just think about that idea for a second the, the supreme centrist take okay um if if fucking you know if american cheese slices you know the fucking craft slices were a political ideology um oh when the, with the with the illegal dissolution of the soviet union capitalist quote-unquote democracy quote-unquote where you have absolutely no say over your actual representatives or your uh, economic um, existence um this is the end of history nothing will ever come literally humanity is peak countries you're not going to develop anything beyond each this other. yeah exactly yeah yeah no this that's just how it works and then what uh, just happened but, two months ago yeah <laughs> i mean yeah yeah like it's 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 a meme it's it's a fucking meme uh, but also likewise something to to note about this end of history bullshit um whenever these centrists like come with their with their perspectives right uh, as aforementioned of course they always ally with the right this is very clear um but this uh like actually this is a question for you Gopnik. i don't know if they're being facetious like they actually know that their positions are full of shit but they pretend that they're not, or they're actually so deluded that they think, for example, it's just, you know, that, ooh, I'm such a centrist and free th thinker that everything I think 100% aligns with the current status quo, the society I was raised in, the liberal garbage that gets spewed on TV, the US State Department bullshit, everything I align with 100%, by the way, I'm a free thinker, you know, also a centrist, by the way, you think we should have socialism? You're fucking crazy. Um, do you think they know that they're full of shit, or do you think they, you know, they're actually so deluded? That uh, they buy their own, uh, they're drinking from their own soup, as you say. <laughs> I think most of them are so deluded because it is uh, an ideology which 
gives you so much in a way while not giving you anything at all. So you get to feel superior. You get to not do anything. Let's just remember what sort of generations we are and what we like to do the most on planet Earth. Nothing. So by being a centrist, you can uh, bring it up at social gatherings. You can be smarter than uh, these uh, batshit insane groups. And in order to be a part of the in-group of uh, I am a globe emoji, uh, you don't really have to do anything. It is by not doing anything that you actually live your ideology, while other, uh, what they would call real ideologies, actually <laughs> need you to act, need you to change something in your immediate surrounding and through that in, in the world as a whole. So it, 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 it's, it's a nice little comfortable trap to jump into, uh, especially when you're even like somebody who's very insecure with themselves, but also, and we need to admit this, when you're genuinely not really interested in politics or whatever, but you don't want to not have an opinion on something, so you have the most basic of opinions on a thing on which you're not really interested in in the first place. Uh, like people that yeah. are... Quote-unquote socially, yeah. Yeah, socially acceptable opinion dot png exactly and that doesn't just apply to uh, quote unquote political centrism it applies to uh, just having hot takes in general which is a, a, a <laughs> gorgeous uh, phenomena of the 21st century <laughs> which does actually sometimes lead to changing people's minds in the right direction or should i say the left direction but uh <laughs> a ha -ha, i'm a boomer yeah so funny uh but uh <laughs> what i want to say but but it also kind of the the hottest take you can make is for it to be mild toast at best mm. uh, and th mm. it's a beautiful phenomena i mentioned it previously but to me it's really interesting on how you don't have to base the idea that your way of thought is actually original and is not shared by the majority of people around you without it actually being an original idea. Do you get what I'm saying? Most people that think that, uh, uh, you know, that they read 1984 and uh, it <laughs> blew their mind, think that nobody around them read 1984 and they're just idiots who uh, are floating in their existence. You know, the meme of, uh, uh, you know, maybe you can't watch Rick and Morty. It's uh, very intellectually stimulating and difficult. You might not get the humor. It's for us uh, smart kids. Uh, mm. But apply... <laughs> Redditors, you must be a Redditor <laughs> with 10,000 karma. <laughs> exactly. But it's, Sorry, it's go on. The, the Reddit mentality. The, I would even call it the nerd mentality. The nerd won. Okay, he won. He beat the shit out of the jock. He beat the shit out of the geek. He beat the shit out of everybody. He is sitting now and telling us that uh, by having the most milk toast of uh, of worldviews, you are the most radical. And also, of course, this this <laughs> when you mentioned 1984. I always am reminded by the fact that the vast majority of people who say 1984 Animal Farm have not read those fucking books, right? First of all, you shouldn't be, be bothered reading because George Orwell is just a shitty writer. I'm sorry to say, right? Okay, um, How Much to Catalonia is all right. It's all right. It's not even great. It's all right. That's all it is, okay? Animal Farm is fucking hot garbage. And 1984 is, like, it's okay. 1984 is but, fine. Um, it's kind of... Yeah, but... You, but the, my point being is, you know, those people are like, <laughs> you've seen those memes where it's like, this is literally 1984. Have you read 1984? No, but I assume this is what it, <laughs> what it spoke about. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, th that is like centrism, just the, 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 a perfect microcosm of what centrism is. Um, yeah, I was going to say another thing that I also want to touch on. Um, I kind of briefly alluded to this earlier, but you know when you see these centrists, right? And of course, how they allude, or, or not allude, excuse me, they... they uh, um, uh, are always actually sided with the right, despite the fact that of the, their veneer of, oh, I'm respectably in the center. Um, and there's this other thought that I had, which is um, you have these right-leaning liberals, which are usually, they paint themselves as centrists. Um, but sometimes I think also you have quite a few, a few people who are much farther right than that, but they want to appear respectable. So they are a victim of this ideology in a weird, in the way you say <laughs> a snake eating its own ass. Um, <laughs> they're a victim of this centrist ideology itself because 
they painted centrism as being respectable, and this person has far-right opinions, but he wants to appear respectable, so then he joins the ranks of the, of the quote-unquote center, and this not only, um, quote-unquote, pollutes whatever centrist positions there are, but in fact defines them entirely by dragging this center to the right. Again, this fishhook. <laughs> Unironically, if, if, fishhook. If you were a right-winger, let's imagine an alternate universe, uh, and you, you want to make money off of shilling this sort of uh, ideology, or you actually believe in it, which uh, nowadays I'm not sure how many of the leadership in those movements actually believe in it. It's just a very good <laughs> no, way no. to make a lot of money. But uh, what would your approach be? Mine, I would literally sell myself as a globe emoji centrist. I would just full on yeah. go with it, and then I would slowly insert socially bigoted ideas in people's heads, you know, <laughs> yeah. using statistics to prove the inferiority of this group or that group, and, you know, calling for the uh, redefinition of what uh, it is to be my nationality and not theirs. And so, oh, I'm, I wonder who does that. <laughs> or, 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 <laughs> Blood quantum. Yeah, or, or taking international <laughs> yeah. organizations which were known for mass murdering leftists and now saying that apparently they're anti-imperialist. You know, little small mm. takes like this that I introduce yeah. to my audience, <laughs> which thinks I'm a centrist. <laughs> uh, sometimes even leftist, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, but uh, it, it would be the perfect spiel. So it's very good that you mentioned this because a lot of, a lot of people actively use it as a veneer, not only uh, as a veneer to look sophisticated because uh, of their egomania, but also as a strategy to introduce even more devious ideas to, to an audience of, uh, of monkeys, basically. Another thing, uh, that's an uh, excellent point. Another thing I would also like to add on this is... Um, there's this perspective that you hear on the right. You've seen this, the, the, this shit, the Elon Musk shit. Which, oh, the lefties are mean. They're so mean to me. Boo -hoo. They, they fucking ratioed me on Twitter. Boo -hoo. Right? And what, what really annoys me is that there's this idea that somehow politics must always be civil. There's civility oh. in politics. Which, by the way, also, it's incredibly hi hypocritical because they only expect uh, civility from our side. Their side has been built and bred on violence, right? They do not hesitate to fucking to, to murder and and, uh, and and prison and do all this shit. They do not care. They don't wait, right? They don't expect... But, but when, it, when it comes to our interactions with them, they expect civility. And then you have these, quote-unquote, enlight enlightened centrists uh, who will come around and be like, you know what? Actually, I was somewhat sympathetic, quote-unquote, ooh, pretending. I was somewhat sympathetic to leftist positions, but they called me sexist, me, right? Or, or they're, they're other bullshit like that. putting politics in my video games. I... I... I grew yeah, up on, yeah. on games in which literally the main enemies were always dudes that wrote in the same alphabet as me, and that yeah. wasn't fucking yeah. political. And then all of a sudden, uh, when they put more women in a fucking game, it's it's political. They made Tifa's tits smaller. <laughs> this is this is an invasion of the SJWs. Uh, the main character in Halo was is a double J. Polar. This is anti-short king yeah. discrimination. <laughs> It's a beautiful tool that almost unilaterally can be used by the right, uh, calling mm. things uh, uh, the injection of politics into every aspect of our society when it doesn't suit you. But when it suits you, you, you ignore the politics, which is, as we've said, 5,000 times built in, yeah. built in into <laughs> absolutely fucking everything. And it's funny how yeah. these same... Uh, I mean, I think it's relevant, and Parenti is the god, this quote that I mm. think everybody should know mm. at this point, is that mm. after a revolution, uh, all the centrists and free thinkers and liberals start mm -hmm. giving a shit all of a sudden about yeah. the civil <laughs> rights of all of those ex-prison oh, guards, yeah. of all of those yeah. ex-generals, of all of those ex-slave mm. owners, of all of those ex-dudes yeah. with the whip that cracked on the back of the people which just mm. to an extent to want to a greater or lesser extent liberated themselves so you compare a country to what it came from with all its imperfections and those who demand instant perfection the day after the revolution they get up and say are there civil liberties for the fascists are they going to be allowed to have their newspapers and their radio program are they going to be able to keep all their farms the passion that some of our liberals feel, the day after the revolution, the passion and concern they feel for the fascists, the civil rights and civil liberties of those fascists who were dumping and destroying and murdering people before. Now the revolution has got to be perfect. It's got to be flawless.
yeah. uh, there, there is an inherent, even for a centrist that genuinely like believes in the ideas mm. of all oh, uh, capitalism is the best we can do, blah blah blah, th- that type of shit. But there is a a distinct hatred, in my opinion, they feel towards mm. the broader Marxist idea because it has greater ideals than anything that they've ever uh, themselves tried to aspire to. So they are ultra critical of every Marxist movement because it is not living up to those ideals in the first millisecond uh, when it's tried. Mm. And it lets, you know, their ego go and it calms them down Mm. by telling them, oh, I'm not a piece of shit. Uh, The only people who are Mm. better than me are with this ideology, but as we can see, this ideology doesn't work. So I am the objectively best person in the room. Hordur. But yeah, I completely agree. And again, to reiterate the, on this point, first of all, by the way, oh, are there civil liberties for the fascists? There should never be civil liberties for the fascists. Fuck off. Okay, that is a, I don't understand why this idea where every single person ever of every political ideology should be able to have access to propagate this their bullshit. No, right? A racist should not be given a platform. This is not something, you know? Um, but no, oh, the, the fucking the light and center is like, oh, you want to censor people. Meanwhile, I've again, like... You will get up and ask for civil liberties for the fascist, but I have never once seen on any mainstream television or, or, or channel, uh, American news source of any kind, a proper representation of communist movements or the uh, or communist, some sort of spokesperson, somebody who can actually articulate what we want, for, for example, in, in the United States or whatever. There are many other countries where there is at least some semblance, some fake semblance, but at least there's at least some aspect or some uh, access that uh, the far left has towards media. And even that is curtailed and limited and all that kind of bullshit. But uh, it's very telling that they will immediately go and ask for civil liberties for fascists and former torturers and all that shit. Meanwhile, they couldn't care less about, for example, yeah, um, uh, left-wing uh, activists of any kind. Uh, and uh, furthermore, on the point of civility, uh, again, to reiterate, because it really does need to be reiterated, um, the people, are like, oh, there's no civility, oh, you guys are nice and politics. That's because, again, as the vast majority of people who are at the butt end of these uh, politi- of, of, of the violence of politics and, and the politicization of everything, um, they don't have the privilege or, or the, 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 you know, this nicety of everything being civil and nice and pleasant and soft, right? Um, if black people are to go out and protest, for example, because of the death of a uh, the, the murder, excuse me, not the death, the murder of an innocent uh, person uh, that just happens to be not white, um, then the police will come and start shooting tear gas and start cracking skulls. Meanwhile, white people can literally march yelling blood and soil and the cops will protect them, right? The, you, this, is, uh, this is not a white-black thing. I'm talking about these white people who, w- by the way, online, they pretend to be fascists, but then when they go out, they have torches and they wear st- swastikas and like, oh, blood and soil. Actually, no, it's a Nordic cross. No, please don't. I just like, I really like Skyrim, guys. That's why I have this. Don't look at my tattoos, please. <laughs> <laughs> right but um yeah like it's 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 these same types it, these are fundamental things like again as a muslim person for example in the united states around this 2016 stuff with the muslim ban all like this would have been any the, a, my experience would be fundamentally different to just some regular guy some regular white guy in the u.s right my experience of politics would have been fundamentally um based on violence Meanwhile, their experience would be, again, the civility of, oh, you know, I'm just on a Discord server. Uh, <laughs> ignore all the uh, underage uh, uh, anime profiles. This is just a regular Discord server. <laughs> but these types also love Which to actually, we're, we're, but yeah, so this is Where just, respect yeah. should be given, because we always kind of fuck with them, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, white American comrades that are very radical and that are... Uh, you know, that push movements forward, et cetera, et cetera, and support people uh, in their direct and broader communities, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, A lot of them do come from places of privilege and are not even sometimes like materially incentivized to be a socialist, yet they are. They have a, I hate the fucking word moral compass, but in this case, as a great oversimplification, we can use it. They have a moral compass uh, that is stronger than their material, uh, social, racial, or whatever interests. And to me, that is beautiful and shows a lot of potential in every single group uh, in society which actually wants to see positive change be enacted uh, around them. You know, they don't have to participate, yet they participate, which uh, is rarely mentioned and is, in my opinion, uh, a, uh, a cool thing to, to see. And of course, just to again reiterate this, we said this across many episodes prior, but this is not an anti-white point. We're not 
arguing that, oh, there's something, but you have to, at the end of the day, when you actually get into in-depth analysis of things, you need to realize that whiteness as a concept both harms white people, or quote-unquote people who would be identified as white, as well as people who aren't white, right? It is, a, again, it's a, uh, a mirage that basically, it's, it shifts depending on the political uh, standing, um, like, and the perfect example is, for example, Russians are white until they're not. They're the, then the, the Asiatic hordes, right? Um, same with just 100 years ago, the Irish or Jews or the Ita uh, Italians, um, and even like uh, in certain parts, certain Latin American countries uh, and their populations can be considered white at some points and Hispanic or, ooh, you know, uh, at others, et cetera, et cetera. The, the entire concept is not against you, oh, white man. <laughs> it's more against the idea of whiteness. And that's what we keep episode. referring to it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But just just to mention it, you know. Uh, now, the something interesting also to, to discuss is how do you deal with these people when you meet them, all right? Because all of us at one point or another will have the displeasure of meeting a centrist. Um, maybe some of us were a centrist before, God forbid. Um, <laughs> and as a result, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to have a proper conversation with these people, right? You have to be, ooh, civil in politics. Um, so when you do want to talk to them, fundamentally what you want to do is you want to question the axioms of their, of their ideology or their lack of ideology at this point. You want to go and uh, cut at the root of what they think. Um, basically interrogate into why they think the way they do um, because it's very and very quick very quickly you only need to think like two three layers deep and then you're gonna you can make them see that the reason they think the way they think is not because they have independently come to these conclusions through independent of, and you know serious inquiry um, they've reached these through basically uh, osmosis from society and from um, the media and even stupid shit like video games which by the way are incredibly incredibly politically charged don't ever don't even get me started on some one of the most um, what's it called widespread um, uh, video game franchises Call of Duty, which in one of them, they changed the Highway of Death, which was an actual thing that was in Iraq uh, that resulted in a, a lot of death and misery at the hands of American guns and bombs and bullets, um, but they, instead they recreated it but made the enemy Russians. It was the Russians who carried it out, not the Americans this time. Like, this is such a, you know, this is, I can't, the audacity to think you can get away with it, and then even further, the audacity, the audacity to get away with it. You know, most Americans who probably played that fucking game, or most people that played that game, didn't even know this was a thing unless they looked it up, right? Um, that's not even to mention. Okay, I'll, I'll give I'll give a st very stupid like side note. Um, we'll probably do an episode on video games eventually, um, just for the memes. But uh, one game that I played uh, when I was younger that I actually did enjoy was called. Uh, I'm pretty sure people know of it. It's called Gears of War. It's an Xbox game, right? Um, and it's based on basically another world, but also has, you know, like there's aliens who fight, or they're not aliens, they're subterranean beings, basically, and you fight them, basically. All guns and bombs and blah, blah, blah all that kind of shit. Uh, shooty, shooty, pew, pew game. Anyways, if you actually read into the lore of the game, which is actually fairly interesting, there is, before, you know, the, the subterranean things came out of the ground, there was a war between two, basically, like, unions of, 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 of uh, people, uh, one of which is very clearly modeled after NATO, and one of which is very clearly NATO uh, modeled after the Warsaw Pact. Uh, and the Soviet Union. And of course, as you may expect, it was the Soviet Union, this Warsaw Pact like image that was defeated and you know, all that kind of stuff. And by the way, they add a bit on top with like genocide of the, these people, which is <laughs> it kind of really peers into the, the, the psyche of American video game developers. Um, but like there's like these subtle things that you don't realize, but even, do you know, it's even to the point that when you see characters, uh, I think in one, uh, one part of the game, uh, in one of the games, one of these characters that's from this former union, he speaks with a Russian accent. This is intent. This shit is intentional, Dude, right? Call it's of Duty World of oh, War. They made a whole game mm -hmm. which was from the perspective of a Red Army soldier from uh, Stalingrad uh, to Berlin, and it had so many relatively pro-Soviet Union uh, and at least pro-Red Army sentiments that literally not the next, but the next next game they made. The first mission that happens in that game is the main character from the previous one, Vasily, is betrayed by evil Soviet bureaucrats, put in a mm. gas chamber, mm. what the used fuck? as an experiment for them to test their uh, chemical weapons, which they are now taking from the Nazis, the Soviets are taking it from uh -huh. the Nazis, to use mm. on the West. <laughs> oh, and then wow. two missions mm. later, it's a whole section in which you are trying to escape a gulag. And the character oh, Reznov, 
who uh, you were sniping through Stalingrad with, who was a proud Red Army, I think, uh, lieutenant, is now this ultra anti-Soviet Union uh, return us to the status quo, uh, freedom, democracy, and markets type uh, uh, type of dude. Of course, uh, yeah. And, like, mm. just that small <laughs> example of you have a game, and I don't even want to think what... Uh, like how the writers were treated in the next two three years that they were prop that they were forced to write a story which kind of completely pisses on everything that the previous game tried to establish most likely i'm not informed but most likely they brought on a completely new team of writers that wrote it but because I, I don't like i can't imagine the same the same group writing the the, the one game and then the other game but, but yeah, yeah. It, and but no, and, and when the U.S. does this, or American, or the West basically does this, now this is ideology. This isn't propaganda. This is just how things are. But if any other country were to do this, no, 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 you're just a you get the what's it called the Twitter thing underneath your name, <laughs> state media. Yeah, yeah. you're fucking Chattanooga how state media. How ideological is that? How ideological is that? Literally, just the 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 the, the, the putting of belongs to media from country A, country B, country C. We either do that for absolutely everybody or we don't do that for nobody. Because that, because that is true apolitical thing. centrism, yeah. which Twitter is trying yeah. to pretend it is. Lamau, Lamau. But I was going to say, but you know how like, they, they don't do anything about the... Bo- like, you know when the Cuban bullshit, bullshit uh, Cuban protests happened or in Bolivia or whatever, and all these fucking bots swept all of Twitter with the same... It, literally, it's copy-paste messages. It's a thing. It is an account. It was made like 10 minutes ago. It has no follow. It's following nobody, and it has no followers. Uh, it's just a string of numbers and no image, and it ha- copy-paste the same image over completely unrelated threads. It's like, oh, Cuba, SOS, blah, blah, or the through the Bolivian thing with Evan Morales, and it, uh, Twitter didn't do shit about that but uh the palestine stuff uh, removed left and right shadow band all that shit god forbid but no what was i gonna say um how embedded ideology uh-huh. is it to such oh, yeah. extent in absolutely yeah. everything that even when we mention something as random as twitter or a video game that came out 15 years ago <laughs> or this marble ball that I'm looking at on my table right now, which was <laughs> obviously <laughs> grafted after some ideological stream of artists which believed in minimalism and is built <laughs> from marble, which in order for it to exist in my corner of the world, people needed to believe in trade. They needed to believe in uh uh, stealing it from a certain place or buying it from a certain place. They needed to believe in the exploitation of labor, which would be necessary to even uh, carve it into this ball and then transport it here. Every single thing that, that you see right now while listening to this podcast, be it in a gym, be it at work, or like the majority of you in a BDSM dungeon, it it, it is extremely ideological and i think it could be a decent note to kind of uh, to kind of wrap on because the, the centrist in his to repeat for 500th time in his belief that there is no ideology uh, in him is the most ideologically poisonous parasite that can exist uh, in the political landscape because at least the fascist knows that he's a fascist not every centrist does. Yeah. Amazing, beautifully put. Uh, <laughs> with that beautiful point uh, that uh, you have me just delivered, uh, now I think we can just segue into just ap- <laughs> talking absolute bullshit. Uh, but I was going to say, uh, for the people on the subreddit, which is, uh, by the way, it's, it's grown quite a bit, and I love seeing the, the stupid memes, recently they added flares uh, to people's names. And I just want to read a couple of those because I found them hilarious. Um, I don't know how, why people even remember this stupid shit that we say, but one of my favorites is, don't cry over spilt be- beans because <laughs> I forgot <laughs> that it's spilt milk. Um, and somebody else has People's Republic of Chattanooga, which is Classic. pretty nice. Um uh, the bionic investor has old guy with huge balls, <laughs> which is one of my patients. Um, which, by the way, actually a new contender today. We have a new contender. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't the guy that I had checked the prostate t- today. It was uh, he had um, what's it called uh, hernia uh, that I had to check. And uh, my God, he had absolutely gar- gargantuan balls. I don't think it was the nice. biggest, um, but um, yeah, it was it, it was up there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, exactly right. Uh, some they have KGB ball liquor, uh, Chattano- Chattanoogan People's Liberation Army, un- unironically Albanian, <laughs> <laughs> and of course Yugopnik's liver gives me hope. 
this is another one. Um, so yes, <laughs> do go do go check out the subreddit, uh, the D program r slash the D program. Um, some good memes and uh, yes. Uh, other than that, uh, I had a stupid point that I was just remembering. Um, the other day I was sifting through some stupid shit and I found um, a suturing kit. Um, and this suturing kit was manufactured by Sigma. So I think you can officially say that I am I am a Sigma. I'm, I'm an absolute Sigma. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, because back in the day, the, the Sigma, the, the, that new mail didn't drop yet, right? So when you read Sigma, you just thought, you know, Sigma, right? The, the Greek shit. Uh, but now, um, yes, you look at it and you're like, yeah. Um, I love two Sigmas because they got a little trinket. I, I, absolute Sigma chat, yeah. Exactly it's like all right. Sigmas. They, um, they, they think they're Sigmas because their trinket is little. <laughs> Absolutely fucking hell. I love I the ironic Patrick Bateman edits. No, my God, please. I mean, there's other things I can... <laughs> oh, God, that's too much. That's too much. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, uh, I was going to say... Um, yeah, no, I was going to say, you know, the, the unironic... Uh, I mean, they're not unironic. They're actual... Uh, they're, they are uh, ironic. Uh, Bat- the uh, American Bateman Psycho thing? edits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Patrick Bateman edit. I fucking love it's, it's that even shit. Even in our it's trailer, so... man. It, it, it's, we yeah. use Patrick yeah, yeah, Bateman yeah, exactly, to yeah. represent uh, mm. JT. <laughs> For some reason, I am I, mean, uh, uh, I am a Soviet uh, Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger, and uh, uh, Hakim is uh, bald and hairy, extremely sexy, muscled up Tom Cruise dancing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a oh, proper, man. This is, that is literally what we look like in real life. Exactly yes no no that, that's pure ideology <laughs> unironically actually that is uh, that's another point we can get on in the ideology of the trailer but not now but <laughs> we could <laughs> hardcore ideology mm-hmm. uh, also if you want to join our growing community over on our Patreon Discord channel which you can get access towards together with plenty of other benefits such as bonus episodes early episodes and the feeling of gratification for uh, helping well us uh, chat. spew uh, Chattanooga snake eating its own ass, <laughs> uh, big ball sack uh, propaganda, uh, which is in no way ideological on a uh, weekly, <laughs> Completely weekly objective. basis. Uh, usually weekly. Yes, no, actually, yes. we have not missed a single episode. So uh, with that being no, said, also no. thank mm. you big time to... Uh, all of our Patreon supporters, this literally would not be possible without yeah, all of you. Absolutely. It takes large chunks out of uh, our weeks, and it doesn't just take from the second we sit down. We all have different projects that we are working on, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the more Patreon can support us, the more time we can allocate to the uh, to this incredible project uh, as well. And we are very thankful for you guys for allowing us to do some, something like this. Without your help, it would be absolutely impossible. So we love you and appreciate you. And this you. is not and licking uh, some, some fucking balls. We're not the KGB. Like, seriously, yeah. this shit helps out a lot. <laughs> Sadly. And mm. uh, it does allow us to grow, does allow us to get logistically better, to just to fucking figure figure everything mm-hmm. out. And most importantly, <laughs> it makes us... <laughs> Every day, we're one step closer to uh, the live episode in Chattanooga. So... <laughs> <laughs> support us and then we'll, you'll see a lot i'm I, i'm absolutely unironic about this by the way at this point i it's like solidified in my mind we need to do a live thing in chattanooga one day one day we shall <laughs> episode day, inshallah, 2000 inshallah. maybe it sounds like yeah, a maybe. decent decent uh <laughs> premiere i'm kidding of course uh so yeah uh thank you so much for tuning in this was uh the 31st episode of the the program i'm Ugopnik. I'm Hakeem. I'm JT. And JT is... <laughs> he's still upstairs I'm, I'm, <laughs> with the door locked. I hear it dangling. I'm JT. I'm very hot <laughs> and have a big cock. And, uh, <laughs> and mean, make really good where's ribs. Where's the lie? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, smoking, just smoking these ribs. Just, just smoking just some meat. All meats. right. <laughs> well, all of these ideological people, right. I just want to do my Gavin, fucking Gavin. barbecue. <laughs> I just want to grill for God's sake. All right, bye. Bye, bye. <laughs>